Most of the headlines you see on the war in Ukraine are about a battle for a particular town, an additional aid package from a Western country, or another round of missile strikes. Those are all important, but they miss the humanity, the fact that there are human beings living in those towns, receiving that aid, being killed by those missile strikes. They're people with names and faces, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. I can think of no one better to talk about the human impact of this horrible war than the First Lady of Ukraine, Olena Zelenska. She joins me now exclusively from Kyiv. Madam First Lady, welcome. Vitaya Farida. Hello, Farid. It's great to see you on the screen. Uh, when we first met in Kyiv many years ago, um, it, it, it did not seem that you would be in a sense a kind of wartime first lady. Um, how much has your, your life changed with this war? Uh, are you, are you um, able to function in any way normally? That's a tough question. Uh, the very issue of normality is a global philosophical question. It depends on your definition of normality, because our life cannot be considered as normal today. Even if you compare what we had a year ago and what we have today in Ukraine, in the first months we were uh, shocked. Um, we could not believe that such an aggression is possible. It is absolutely illogical and it was inconceivable that it can happen in the center of Europe. Now people are trying to go on living, working, uh, having their children go to school. Uh, sometimes they even make jokes. And not only are they trying to survive, but live a meaningful life. All people in Ukraine are subject from time to time to Russia's missile attacks. Our children understand the sound when a rocket flies and when a drone flies. People can now tell between the sound of a drone uh, in the sky and uh, the enemy's uh, missile. Our children have grown up too soon. And you can see a lot of uh, young children whose eyes are those of the adults, and it worries me immensely. But in spite of everything, we are trying to be optimistic. People are getting adjusted to the new conditions, and today people um, have got accustomed to those electricity cuts, and they find uh, new opportunities in that. And when uh, at 3 um, a.m. Uh, electricity appears, then life emerges uh, anew, and uh, people start uh, their washing machines and uh, their coffee machines. Uh, and there are a lot of people who uh, have learned how to cook with no electricity, even having electric cookers. So this huge impact that the uh, war has had on us also has taught us a lot, and we are trying to preserve some sort of normality today. When you look at the way the Russians have waged this war in places like Mariupol, where there are some estimates that one out of every four residents uh, of that city were, were killed, uh, when you look at the bombing of civilian areas, uh, the bombing of uh, power plants to, pr to, to make people uh, lose access to heat and electricity, uh, it seems that it is an effort to break the will of the civilian population. And it takes us back to really kind of World War II days. Um, is it, do you worry that it could succeed, that, this, that just the sheer devastation of the Russian assault uh, could break the back of some, in some of these uh, cities and some of these communities? Uh, 
Of course, that's exactly what they are trying to do. I don't think they will succeed. And we understand that upon carrying on for uh, a year, we are capable of um, persevering uh, for a, even longer. Uh, we uh, can endure it. But you are right in that this state terrorism aims to intimidate people. Quite recently, say three days ago, uh, there was yet another shelling of uh, civilian communities and uh, the uh, projectiles hit a open air market with a lot of people and it was a sheer act of a terrorist that cannot be either explained or justified and one of the purposes that they have is uh, uh, to destroy the infrastructure of this country for people to be exhausted for people to raise their voice and say oh, we are sick and tired of uh, this war uh, let us negotiate let us bring this war to the end but they failed in uh, this purpose with so many men are fighting now or supporting the war effort in some way. Uh, a lot of Ukrainian women have stepped up and taken roles that perhaps they would not have taken before the war. Tell us a little bit about what you have seen about the women of Ukraine and how they have responded to this war. Uh, you know, uh women have uh, taken the brunt of uh, this war in terms of ensuring that their families are okay that their children are okay that their children are safe mothers and grandmothers have stepped in to protect them several millions of our um, women and children have uh, fled uh, from uh, the war abroad uh, there are a lot of um, internal displaced people more than five million uh, Ukrainians have left their homes and now uh, reside in all regions of Ukraine. It is uh, very unusual, it is not normal, and people have to endure that as well. I would not uh, actually single out women as a part of a population. They do what is needed. So uh, we protect each other, we support each other. And we hope that most of the families will uh, be able to reunite. I would not be wrong if I say that more than half of our families are divided or separated. Some, uh, there are some families where uh, the members of the families are in uh, occupation, whereas other relatives are in the a free area of Ukraine, and they have no way of knowing what happens to those under the occupation, and they are not sure whether uh, their relatives are still alive, uh, uh, and they are full of hopes that they are. I can't even uh, define this expectation, this, this hope. You've talked, uh, Madam First Lady, about the uh, the, the, the special needs of children in this situation. And I was wondering, uh, you have little children yourself. How have they dealt with this? What have you told them? Uh, that when the, when the war started, they didn't see their father for months. Uh, and even now, do they understand it? Have, had they, have they had to grow up very fast? You know, all children in Ukraine understand what's going on, including mine. You cannot conceal anything from them. And we are not trying to do so because they live in the same information space as all of us. In our family, we are trying to support some no normal uh, life. Uh, mother works, children study, and that supports us because uh, studies is a purpose of their life. That's what keeps your life together. Just something that uh, does not allow you to uh, get desperate. 
своїм спокоєм. I try to um, cuddle my children, to calm them, to reassure them, but the children should live their well-organized, well-structured life, and I'm trying to bring in this order into their life. I understand that sooner or later everyone uh, Stop thinking that uh, they do not know what's going on and what will happen tomorrow and whether they should put uh, a lot of effort into, say, university studies or studies at school. At school. But uh, we should not be uh, disillusioned, we should not give up because uh, we know that Ukraine after the war will need educators uh, young people that would be restoring our country and restoring normality in the country and in our family.